I have wanted to be an Ivy League student since I was in middle school, but gaining admission was no small feat. My family guided me as best as they could, but ultimately, none of us knew what getting in really entailed. I worked for hours on my essays, poured all my time into extracurriculars, and always focused on this dream of mine. It seemed so far out of reach, until March 28th, 2019, I got in. I have been a student at Yale for over a year now. Maybe some of you have been following my journey, or maybe you are new to my channel. And I am so privileged and blessed to be a Yale student. I never want to take that for granted. The Ivy League will open doors I would never have imagined. But what does getting there really look like? Today, I want to talk about the romanticization of academic culture. Hey everyone, so I just kind of wanted to make this serious little video um, just in general about the Ivy League and everything that it entails. I would not change my experience for the world and I know that um, other people, some a lot of other people wouldn't either and um, being in the Ivy League is such an amazing thing. Um, just going to, you know, Yale as a top school in the United States is just, is mind-blowing that I'm here. But I did want to make this video because our culture does really romanticize just like academia and some people define this romanticization of academic culture and, you know, working as hustle culture because it does apply um, outside of college and later in life but i think it's really important that we start recognizing this now as college students and especially as myself as a student in the ivy league where it is so so prominent there comes a point where you know you could be pushed into this ivy league culture but you know you're not going to be happy in this and you know you don't want such a rigorous, you don't want to be in such a rigorous field. You don't, you know, that's not where you're happy. And of course, there's always going to be moments where we question what we're doing. But if you do think that, you know, the Ivy League is somewhere where you definitely want to be, right? Um, and you're working towards it and then you get in and you're a little disappointed um, when you when you see some of the culture, some of the things that you've never experienced, especially if you come from a public high school, and it's hard to get used to, it's hard to understand, and I think that's something that's not talked about a lot, especially on YouTube. Um, I loved watching vlogs and watching tips about how to get in, but I would have loved to hear about the struggles. Um, that are accompanying the Ivy League school and kind of prepare myself for those struggles. My mom once told me that you're going to be really stressed, you're going to have a lot of work, and I just thought, yeah, well, I'll handle it. You know, I'll be fine with that. I've always been stressed. I've always had a lot of work. But the Ivy League culture is definitely different. I recently watched this girl this girl's video who goes to Stanford um, and they came up with the floating duck syndrome. I think it was like originated with Stanford students. A duck on the surface of the water is just floating there and it seems to be, you know, really just calm and at ease and just enjoying their little lives. But in reality, under the surface is what you don't see is is that they're paddling furiously to to stay afloat in that water and to seem so at ease. They're doing so much work. Um, and that's kind of what it's like to be, I guess, at Stanford, but also at Yale. Um, and I definitely related with that when she explained the syndrome. And I feel like I've heard it before. Um, it's not really comforting to, to be in an atmosphere like that. Um, and I know at my high school, you know, and I, I don't know if this is common for all high schools, but when when someone was struggling, everyone would know. Like, no one would be shy to be like, I'm having a problem. You know, we would 
we would be vocal about our anxieties to our teachers um, in class. We wouldn't pretend like everything's okay because we would loudly and vocally go for help. So at Yale, there's all these resources to get help and in that way, it's great. Um, but on top of that, we're expected to do more than just exceed in class. And, you know, obviously, if you're trying to get in the Ivy League, you're expected to do that anyways. You're expected to have these extracurriculars and these extra things that you're passionate about just b besides schoolwork. Um, but at Yale, it's like you have to be doing all of the clubs you can. You have to be getting an internship every summer. If you're not doing an internship, you better do summer classes because you can't be doing nothing all summer. I've really felt these things um, this past semester as I'm taking a gap semester. There are just all of these pressures and honestly, the, the pressure is, is in some ways justified, right? We, we want to be, we want to succeed, we want to have these like higher level accomplishments. But at what cost, at what point can you say, I need to step back and like prioritize my mental health? You know, there's not really a lot of space for that. And say, I took a gap semester because I wanted to work and just have a job. What are the admissions officers at my future grad school gonna think? Are they gonna think that I should have tried something else? Um, and it's always like a constant worries in the back of your mind and everyone pretends like there aren't these constant pressures. Everyone pretends like it is easy to get A's in class. I is Maybe for some people it is, but I know for me it's not and the majority of my friends it's not. Um, and it's not until you really sit down and talk to someone about it that you realize that everyone's going through these struggles. And that's the point where you can begin to reframe your mindset. I recently talked a little about this in my gap semester day in my life video, but going back to college um, soon made this pressure come back on me again. And it's a good pressure, but it also can be a bad pressure. We do need this urging um, to do well if we do want to do well. We can't just sit back and do nothing, of course. We recognize that. But again, as I said, there comes a point where you need to do what is good for you and not do what is good for a resume. I feel like that should be appreciated more. Um, people should recognize that more. And is that the kind of culture that we want to keep creating? Like, at what point do we say no? And I always say that, you know, us, like, we're the future. Why are we taking this grind culture to heart so much? Um, what would it look like if we didn't value success over all else? Yeah, so what are some steps that we can take now to stop this hustle culture? I know for myself, there will definitely be those times still where I, I will have to stay up a little longer at night. I will have to pull those all-nighters if I procrastinate. But how can I combat that on a more broad level so I'm not staying up every single night? One thing that I think I definitely want to do is to incorporate moments every day where I can just slow down, reflect. Yeah, so where can you put those moments in your day? Um, with me, I like to have slow mornings. So I try to wake up in the morning and um, Bible study, make coffee before I start the day. Yeah, and I think it will look different for everyone. But um, where are those moments where we can start com start combating like the, the idea of hustle culture, the idea of this, this constant work? Because working hard is so important. But if we keep working more and more and more and more, never giving ourselves time to stop and think and reflect and just be, then we are going to reach that point where we burn out. And then we'll be left with a lot of 
a lot of rebuilding to do. The thing to remember, which I think is great, is it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and I know some people's goals are definitely harder than others. Um, don't get me wrong. I do not want to be doomed into this hustle culture and I want to experience life um, to the fullest. It's great to work hard, but um, it's definitely not everything. And that's what I wanted to kind of point out and think about in this video. I'd love to hear any feedback about this video and these types of videos on my channel. I did link um, a New York Times article below. I think they took a more pessimistic stance. You know, maybe we can be the employers that um, see, the poten see the potential in things that aren't just resume builders. So all that to say, I will share my journey in college, but I do want to be more open about sharing the hard side of it, the hardships that I have, that there are real struggles that we go through, that I go through, and those shouldn't be hidden. Um, we should talk about those things because they're real. Everyone goes through them and there is a way to get through them. Yeah, so those are just my thoughts on that. Um, but I hope you guys liked this style of video and please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.